Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another episode of Tarot by Hillary Live. I am your hostess with the mostest, Hillary of tarotbyhillary.com, professional tarot reader, demystifying the mystical and putting you in touch with the most beautiful of gifts, your own intuition. Because yes, my friend, do not argue with me. You have intuition. I believe everybody has intuition. So thank you all for um, the brief hiatus from live shows. Um, something came up. <laughs> had to be addressed right away. Um, and uh, once again, we are pushing back <laughs> the episode that was supposed to be like two months ago with alters. But tonight, we're talking about it. So um, the episode tonight is about alters. Um, what What is on an altar? What is an altar? What's the purpose of an altar? Um, what kinds of altars can there be? Um, what what is meant to be on an altar or representative of an altar um all that stuff um so this was by um another one by popular request so we're going to talk about that tonight um i do see that katie is here hello katie um i was considering broadcasting over to um instagram tonight igtv live um but i figured that this episode i know i say it all the time i'm probably jinxing myself saying it um but i do think this episode is going to be shorter than most of my episodes um i know that we do have a good time over here in tarot by hillary land with our weekly shows um and i always love the discourse that happens when people tune in live um but I do think that we are going to be um, less than an hour, <laughs> which will allow me to upload to um, IGTV after the recording is done. And that way, some of our Instagrammers can see um, what the big deal is about um, viewing over on Facebook or on uh, YouTube live. Um, I, like the, I like the production value and until um, I can do it on three streams instead of two, that's just gonna have to be how it is. So um, Katie says, life happens, we love you. I love you too, Katie. Thank you so much for being one of my regular viewers and tuning in whenever we do have it. And um, I did realize this. Um, we never had a second anniversary show um, because I did start these live shows two years ago in I think either August or September. So we're definitely we're definitely two years into it. And um, if you haven't been um, tuning in since the beginning, um, you may think that I'm very polished and professional and very at ease. Um, trust me, if you go back and look at previous episodes, which you totally can on either Facebook Watch or on YouTube, wherever you're viewing this from, um, go back, go back and see some of the earlier episodes and you'll definitely see the nerves coming up and me stuttering and stammering and not finding the right words in the moment or feeling like I have to fill in dead air or be constantly on all the time, um, you'll see the difference. And um, the difference comes from doing this weekly, from just rolling with it, um, being authentic, uh, acknowledging when shit happens and um, just showing up anyway. Um, I think that's the biggest I guess, draw to these weekly shows is that um, I'm not entirely polished or professional. Um, and when I'm trying to be too polished or professional, that's when the stutters happen or that's when the nerves happen and that's when I'm just not authentic anymore. So the whole purpose of these is to educate you guys um, and answer any questions that you might have um, or teach the topics that you guys wanna learn about. Now, now, primarily, I am a tarot reader, but I also am a witch. I'm in training to be a, a priestess. Um, so there's different metaphysical topics. Um, I love all, all kinds of divination. I just happen to be best at tarot, but that doesn't mean that I'm not a divination magpie. I also like runes. Um, I like the Tessera Oracle. We have an episode about that. Um, actually, two episodes about the Tessera Oracle. 
Um, and of course I didn't, I should have put that to hand. Um, I should, I should do a little bit of an unboxing for you guys at the end, um, including the new charm from the Tessera. Um, anyway, all of that is to say, um, I am knowledgeable or familiar with a number of metaphysical topics. Um, and I'm always happy to do some research and teach about what I know. Um, and all of these, um, weekly shows are, brought to you by popular demand by you, by the viewers, by people that keep on tuning in each week and telling me what you wanna learn about. And that's where that list is coming from. Now, occasionally I will have some ideas about what I can teach, um, or I have had clients that ask me a question or a frequently asked question that I think, hmm, that would be a good topic for the weekly show. Let me go ahead and add it. So anyway, tonight's episode, Tonight's episode is about altars. Someone requested, I can't remember who, um, it was probably several people that requested about altars. So that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. First and foremost though, um, let me let you know what's going on as well for the month of September. We already have our episodes scheduled um, because uh, I didn't do a show last week. Um, and I already had a list of topics that I was able to schedule in. Normally at the top of each month, um, we may have a episode where we're just scheduling episodes for the month. What do you guys wanna learn about? Is there something um, that you want to revisit? Is there a particular tarot card that you're having trouble with or want more information about? Um, one of the past episodes that we've done is on the fives and the sevens of the tarot deck because people were having trouble discerning the difference between the fives and the sevens of the tarot. So we went through the fives and the sevens. Um, I think that was a two part episode if I'm remembering correctly, um, where we took out, and this is by the way, a quick tarot tip for you. Um, if you're having trouble understanding the differences between, um, between a suit or the differences between the numbers in a suit, um, take out your tarot deck and lay down the fours of the tarot or the fives or the sixes. Um, take out the fours and the sevens or the fives and the sevens. Look at the similarities, look at the differences. Take out different decks if you have multiple decks or do a Google image search um, if you don't have multiple decks and look at different depictions from different artists' perspectives um, and you may be able to glean more information, more understanding about what that particular tarot card means and what the divinatory interpretation of that tarot card may mean. So quick tarot tip from me to you. Um, or go ahead and check out that episode on the fives and the sevens of the tarot that is in the archives of past episodes. All right, before we get any further, and I did promise it's gonna be a shorter episode so that we can upload this to IG. Um, gotta keep it under an hour, folks. Um, we always start off every episode with, we start the same way, we end the same way where we, we bookend the topic with the start of the astrology from Teresa Reed's wonderful Astro Biz Digest. And then we end every episode with the weekend forecast where I pull a tarot or an oracle card or a charm uh, to guide you through the weekend. It's basically a reading for the collective, whoever is tuning in at the moment live. And also if you're watching the replay and you find it to be particularly helpful or accurate, um, that's always great too. Um, sometimes tarot readings uh, transcend time and space um, and you will hear that message when you're meant to hear that message. Usually when you've probably heard that message several times over from different sources and then you're finally ready to accept that message. Anyway, astrology, Teresa Reed. Let's go. Oh wait, first. <laughs> I'm off track. So we do have the schedule for um, for September's shows. So let me go ahead and show that to you first. Um, oop, that's the one for August. Sorry about that. Oopsie. Let me see. Did I load it? Of course not. Of course I didn't load it. Let me load that up for you guys right now. And I'll give you a reminder at the end of the episode as well. See, 
Recording live, you never know what happens. Okay, here we go. So, last week we didn't have a show. Thank you all for your understanding and patience. Uh, tonight we're talking about altars. Next week, Friday the 17th, we're talking about um, the autumn equinox, which is part of the Sabbath series, which I've been doing as part of my priestess training. So we'll be talking about the autumn equinox and what that means. Um, if you celebrate the autumn equinox, how to celebrate it, um, different rituals, um, different symbols, colors, altars as well. So we are going to be talking a little bit about the autumn equinox in this episode on altars because I'm going to give a possible suggestion for an autumn equinox altar on this episode so that you're prepared for the next episode about the autumn equinox. Um, and then finally to cap off September, we have Friday, September 24th, cultivating a gratitude practice. And as always, I'm going to bring tarot into that. So does that sound good to everybody? Um, I hope so. And if that sounds good to you, please go ahead and tune in live um, on that Friday, the, the 10th, the 17th, or the 24th to find out about those different topics and workshops. All right. Now, let us get in. And, and Katie says, excellent, great. I'm glad. Let us get into the AstroBiz Digest, um, which is a $99 subscription um, for a year's worth of astrology. You can purchase that um, through Teresa Reed um, on her website, www.thetarolady.com slash astro-biz-digest. Um, and also we have um, links to that in the live chat for both Facebook and for YouTube. So go ahead and check that out. The links are all right there. Um, but I always want to shout out where I'm getting this information from and give you just enough um, to see if that's the kind of stuff that you would be interested in. And then if you want more from Teresa Reed, you can go ahead and purchase your own subscription to the Astro Biz Digest. So I have displayed that as well. The link's right there for you to check it out. Don't go there right now <laughs> because we have some astrology to talk about from her. All right, let me put back on my overlay and we are in the astro weather portion of the broadcast. Let me grab my, eh, I'll probably just pull it up on my computer. How's that sound? <laughs> I was so focused on getting my water bottle um, out of the fridge to make sure that I was hydrated that I didn't even pull up any of the astrology yet. So bear with me. Let me let that load a little bit. Also, do want to put it out there. If you are looking to purchase a reading with me, um, you can do so by booking at tarotbyhillary.com. That is Hillary with one L. Um, just want to put it out there right now at the top of the broadcast. This is not the space for free readings or freebies, unless, of course, you want to wait till the end of the episode where I do the weekend forecast for the collective. Um, but you can definitely book a one on one session with me over phone or Skype or an email reading at tarotbyhillary.com. Um, purchase options are available and I'm just putting it out there because we're getting into spooky season and everyone seems to be asking me about how can I purchase a reading? How can I get a re reading with you? Do you do parties? And the answer is yes, I usually do parties, but pandemic's still going on. So I have not opened up in-person readings or party or event readings because of that. But phone, Skype, and email readings are still available. So get yours now. Book now or forever hold your peace because it is my busy season. We're getting into it. September and October, everyone realizes I need a tarot reading. By the way, I do do readings basically every time of the year, all year long. You do not have to wait until spooky season to get a reading with me. It just so happens that September and October are usually my busy, busiest months because people 
are in the mood or it's in the air. Anyway, let me pull up the astrology and then we will get into altars. Okay, so I know that there's the, so the big astrology going on right now is um, Venus squ switching into Scorpio today. Um, so you want to deepen relationships with clients or business partners when Venus switches into Scorpio on the 10th today. Look for ways to create intimacy through special deals, one-on-one -on -one meetings, or exclusive content. Um, just to let you know, this is geared towards business owners on, and entrepreneurs. If it gets to entrepreneurial lingo for you, just go ahead and adjust that in your head. The astrology is meant for everyone. Um, this is not the most social transit, which means if you're hosting gatherings, the smaller, the better. Venus in Scorpio is also excellent, an excellent transit for adding a bit more mystery to all of your promotions. Instead of showing it all at once, give hints about what you're up to. Think alluring and seductive. Folks will eat that up. I'd also recommend collecting money owed. If there are outstanding invoices, hit people up and make them pay. Venus will be in Scorpio until October 2nd. Um, sorry, not October 2nd, October 7th. So that's the big, um, that's the big lunation happening today. All right, so getting into the nitty gritty, the moon will be in mysterious, mysterious Scorpio today, the ideal lunation for financial strategizing. Update your budget, straighten out your records, organize your quarterly taxes, and pay outstanding bills. This will also be the right time to invest in your business. It, your instincts are sharp. If your BS detector is going off, don't ignore it. You can get to the bottom of any fishy stuff. Business slows to a crawl when the moon squares Saturn at 2.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. People are cautious and worried about the economy. You'll need to hustle hard for those rubber bands. Venus slips into Scorpio at 4.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's already happened, folks. Um, I've already read you the info. Um, and hint, people want an intimate experience. So today, Friday, is a power day for Scorpio and a weekday for Taurus. All right, are we good for Friday? Are you ready for fr um, for Saturday and Sunday? Give me a hell yes in the chat. And I'm going to take a little water break. And remember to stay hydrated, folks. Um, even if you're just listening um, and thinking that, oh, well, she's doing all the work. <laughs> you know, she needs to be hydrated. I don't need to be hydrated. Receiving messages like these, um, even if it's astrology, even if it's a tarot reading, um, you want to keep yourself hydrated. It's it can be just as energetically um, invigorating or draining um, as giving the readings. Okay, cool. Katie says yes, please. So we're gonna continue. All right. Saturday and Sunday. Saturday saw, starts off on the right foot for PR and presentations with the moon sextile the sun at 10.08 a.m. This would be a stellar morning for marketing, live streams, networking, or secret events for your VIPs. Um, actually, I, I owe a couple of people um, an email reading and EFT personalized EFT tapping session. So I think I'm probably going to be doing that tomorrow morning. So um, if you're on my docket for email readings, keep a weather eye in your inbox um, tomorrow morning. Uh, creativity and intuition are jamming at 2.50 p.m. when the moon aligns with Neptune. A brainstorming session could lead to profitable insights. Hang with your team and make a plan to take those ideas and turn them into gold. The evening is a mixed bag due to the moon in a square with Jupiter and a sextile with Pluto around 7 p.m. My advice, count your wins and close the door. Tomorrow is another day. Sunday, 
proves to be terrific for promotion, broadcasting, publishing, and travel when the moon darts into enthusiastic Sagittarius at 4.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Schedule time for one or more of these activities and your biz could be lucky, or you could be lucky personally. A moon Saturn sextile at 5.18 p.m. is groovy for serious conversations, meeting with bigwigs, or online teaching. If you feel like working, expect, expect plenty of productivity and happy vibes. If you'd rather play, I won't judge. <laughs> and neither will I. Um, Saturday is a power day for Scorpio and a weekday for Taurus. And Sunday is a power day for Sagittarius and a weekday for Gemini. Okay. That's a lot. That's a lot going on, but I am keeping a weather eye, especially on um, Sunday morning. Um, I think we have the farmer's market returning to uh, my neck of the woods um, after a little break. Um, so I'm ready to probably play more than work on Sunday. <laughs> Saturday is probably going to be my busy day. Okay, so opening up the floor um, if anyone had um, a weird experience or energetically overloaded or what the heck was going on with that on Monday or Tuesday, go ahead. You can drop it in right now. Um, let me know if you want me to look at the astrology for that day um, and perhaps provide a little bit of insight um, via Teresa's wonderful Astro Biz Digest. Um, if not, uh, we will move on to the main topic of tonight's episode, which is altars. And I'm going to go ahead and put up our handy to handy timer widget to count it down. Give that a minute. What are you doing? There we go. <laughs> I don't know why it wasn't taking. Okay. Katie's saying nothing for me. I'm 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 hopefully hopeful that that's no news is good news, Katie. No no big kerfuffles. I, I definitely had a very hectic Tuesday, but I think that was just simply because of a short work week for uh, Labor Day in the United States. So that may have to do with astrology and also may have to do with a short work week. I am not going to speculate. Okay, cool. We are getting into the main topic, which is altars. Ah, I see. Katie says, I'm giving up and moving forward, thinking forward positively and hopefully. Okay. And hopefully uh, the weekend forecasts will help align with your positivity. My hair's doing some funky things. Do you guys like my hair like this? I realized high ponytail with short hair kind of look, turns into this like half ponytail without me even trying because there's, there's some short hair back here. Anyway, so let us talk about altars and what you guys want to know about altars. Um, because when people ask me about altars, there's usually an ulterior, haha quasi pun intended, um, reason for asking me about altars in which um, they're trying to accomplish something or they're, they have a specific question about an aspect of altars um, or they want to create their own or they have created their own, but they're wondering, did I do it right? Is this like or, or I like a collection of things, but a collection of things, is that a display or is that an altar? And really, with a lot of metaphysical and magical things, 
that is a question that you have to answer for yourself and you have to answer it in knowing what is your intention in creating this collection. Um, because if it's just aesthetically pleasing to you, then that's probably not an altar. However, if it is both aesthetically pleasing to you and you are um, putting things together that are like pink and pretty and rose quartz and this because you wanna manifest more love or more self-love or more femininity into your life, then that would be, that moves from being a visually and aesthetically pleasing collection into an altar. It always goes back to intention. What is your intention? Um, if you are intending to connect more with your ancestors or with your roots or with your culture, um, you can you can have a collection of photos of your relatives on your altar along with um, some of their favorite foods um, or their favorite drink or candies or candles um, or scents or oils um, or flowers um, in order to uh, or or water as well um, in order to um, bring yourself closer to them and establish a connection that would be the definition of an ancestor altar so it really is going back to what is your intention what do you want to do um, it's the same kind of question as um, when you want to cast a spell there has to be a reason for casting a spell to cast a spell, which always goes back to the intention. What are you trying to do? What is your intention? What are you trying to manifest? Um, so Katie says, mine just happened, but I rarely change it. I'm curious on the changing it due to whatever might be required. You were answering my question before I even posted it. Well, you know, I might be psychic, so. <laughs> and is there a layout that you follow? So yeah, we're going to get into this. Um, but yeah, it like, um, that is, that's my job is to anticipate some questions before you guys even answer it. So I'm so glad that's already happening. Um, there is, there is a layout I follow, and but there's all, it's also very experiential in a way as well. And we do have some, I do have some books that I'm going to cite on the subject. Um, and then I also am going to give you as always my own personal practices, because I really feel like when you hear about other people's personal practices, it allows you to have that experiential components when it comes to magic or spell casting or altar work or um, connecting with divinity. Um, that no book or reading can teach you. It is very much about encouraging the experiential and the personal. Um, so it, it's interesting that you say that, Katie, because it just, like you're, you're saying, it just happened. Um, but you rarely change it. So you can changing it, um, curious on the changing it due to whatever might be required would be more towards what are you looking to manifest? I mean, if it could be like, if you want like a positivity altar um, or moving forward or thinking forward, um, that might be something that you shift your main altar to accommodate or you might wanna create a separate altar for that. Um, so again, there's no hard and fast rules when it comes to altars, um, which can be freeing and also overwhelming at the same time if you're just starting out or trying to change one that already exists. Um, because whenever I say that, people are just like, I don't want the freedom, I wanna to be told what to do. Um, but you, there are some, there is some structure that you can hear about and then tweak to your own needs. So let us go to the tape. Um, while I'm looking this up, in um, I'm going to cite um, The Real Witch's Craft by Kate West and also Craft, How to Be a Modern Witch by Gabriella Herstick. Um, this is the UK printing. I believe the US printing is Inner Witch. It's under a different name, but it's the same book. Um, so we're going to be looking in these two books. Um, but also I do want to say, 
the structure that I have for an altar, and this is something I learned a long time ago when I was a baby witch, and I don't necessarily know how applicable it is or can be or how much I really ascribe to it now, but I was taught that um, you want to have a representation of, um, of the five elements on your altar in order for it to be like a functioning or a real altar. Now, I don't necessarily know if that's the case anymore, but Baby Witch was taught this, so those old habits are kind of hard to break. Um, but I do understand the whole concept of um, learning the rules before you break them. I mean, especially knowing about tarot and knowing that, um, like knowing meanings of the tarot cards before choosing to perhaps deviate from those rote meanings and going with your personal instinct or in intuition. Kind of the same thing with altars. You kind of want that structure so that you can learn the structure before you start breaking the rules, so to speak. Um, but Baby Witch Hillary was taught have a representation of all five elements on your altar, earth, air, fire, water, and spirits. Um, so oftentimes um, people would get a um, uh, a pentacle or pentagram, um, a stone pentagram to put on their altar. Um, sometimes you would have that as a base and then put other things on top of the pentagram, um, such as crystals. Um, I'm, I'm looking around and I have like candles and crystals surrounding me. Um, actually, <laughs> I'm looking at my um, TV stand and without realizing it, I've created, I've created an altar on my TV stand. You know, so the whole thing about what Katie said, I mine just happened. I mean, it, it's it's kind of like I look around my apartment and it's little altars everywhere, kind of without my even realizing it until like I look. Um, so I've got like I've got my spirit board sitting um, on my TV stand. We have um, a bunch of our Funko Pops also on our TV stand along with candles, my um, my mini Himalayan salt lamp, quartz crystal, um, amethyst, um, a lot of candles, some of my Palo Santo, my lighter. Um, I got some, I've got my tarot deck back here and another candle back here um, in our communication center. So, um, so yeah. Um, for, for Katie, I would say, look at the altar that you currently have, um, and consider how you want to update your altar for that, your current goals, or if you want to create a separate altar, I think that would be the first question to ask. Do you want to update your current altar or do you want to make a secondary altar to go towards your goals? But baby, baby, witch Hillary was told earth, air, fire, water, spirit, and having a representation of each on the altar to start. Um, usually a candle for the god, for the goddess, if you are deity-centered or deity-focused. Um, sometimes you wanna update your altar seasonally as well to be in, um, in alignment with the energy of the seasons. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that um, when talking about the autumn equinox and possible ideas for an altar for the autumn equinox to segue nicely into next week's topic of the Sabbath series on the autumn equinox. Um, so yeah, that's that's from memory. <laughs> let's, let's see what Kate West has to say about altars, which I'm sure will be extensive or not so extensive, let's see. Yeah. There's a couple of entries on altars, pages 17, 26, 28, 53, and 88. So let's take a look. Um, <laughs> I think she said the same thing, honestly. I, I bookmarked. Hold on. So creating the sacred space. When you are working... Whether you're working alone in a group, it is worth learning how to create the sacred space in a fairly formal way first in order to understand how it works. First, an area, whether indoors or out, needs to be cleared so you can easily move around in it. It need not be large, but it should have enough space to comfortably fit the person or people working within it, as well as any tools and equipment they may want or need to use. So altars, honestly, um, one of one of the 
ways that you can have an altar, or one of the reasons you may want to have an altar is a, a working space for spell work. Um, and, and having the tools of a spell on your altar to continue the work after the, um, the ritual is done. The traditional circle is nine feet in diameter, but you may not have the luxury of that much room. I certainly don't. <laughs> this space will usually contain an altar, which may be simply a table or surface onto which you put the things you will be using, like I said. Um, if you are working indoors, this will include items to represent each of the elements. Um, and here are some suggestions, but you don't have to be limited to these suggestions. Incense for air, a candle for fire, a dish of water for water, and salt for earth. Pretty, pretty standard, but sometimes I will use a feather for air. Um, sometimes I will use dirt for for earth um it really does depend on upon what you're what you're trying to do the goddess and god may be represented by images candles or other items or statuaries um, visual links of this kind are more important in group working than they are when you work on your own, as everyone has to be focused on the same thing at the same time. If you are working magic, which is going to center around candles, a talisman, or other physical objects, then these two should be on the altar so that you do not later need to leave the sacred space to fetch anything. And also you can leave things to charge on an altar as well. So let's look. Any questions so far? Not much there. Not much there either. I mean, in short, you can have the altar to charge or you can have the altar as where the magic happens. <laughs> but sometimes an altar is not required to cast a spell, um, especially if you're on the go or you need to cast a spell quickly. Um, you may not have time to set up an altar to do so. Yep, the other citations in here are just about, about using an altar in rituals. Okay. All right. Yep. <laughs> so Katie says, it would seem the way mine happened is like I read a book when I hadn't. My desk becomes the alternative altar, the working one with candles. Got it. So I think really where the rubber meets the road when it comes to altars is giving you a concrete example. Um, and so this is the reason why I'm going to um, base this on um, the autumn equinox because that's going to be the next um, holiday that I'm going to be talking about next week. Um, so in this book, which I highly recommend, Craft, How to Be a Modern Witch by Gabriella Herstick. Again, it goes by Inner Witch in the United States. 
same book. Um, autumn equinox is the time to set, see the abundance set before us so we can enter the darkness and await transformation that's promised there. Um, so here, um, there are suggestions for um, decorating your altar, um, non-ritual ways to celebrate, um, and a suggested ritual as well, which may or may not take place at your altar. So here's suggestions for how to decorate your altar on the autumn equinox. And so this may give you a good idea of how to create an autumn equinox altar. Um, if you are unfamiliar with doing an altar and you want to create an altar, this might be um, a good example or a way to do it so that you can start. You can start by doing a one for autumn equinox. Um, so how to decorate your altar. Um, squash and gourds, leaves, acorns, seeds, nuts, and pine cones, feathers, anything that makes you feel rich and grounded. Um, so your mileage may vary. Um, an ear of corn was said to be at the center of the Eleusian mysteries, and this may be an addition to your altar if it calls to you, if it calls to you. Um, if, you're not a, if you're not a big fan of corn, um, I would not put it on your altar. Um, again, um, this is this is an example that I give in spell work. Um, if you want to do a money spell and it's recommended that you use basil, but you hate the scent or the taste of basil, then your prosperity magic is not going to work out very well if you use basil. So again, um, use the things that signify abundance or prosperity to you. Um, for here, for the autumn equinox, use the things that may feel, make you feel rich and grounded. Um, maybe maybe an ear of corn doesn't do it for you. Maybe put a butternut squash on your altar instead, or or create or you know make butternut squash soup. Um, the ten of and then here again, we're going to bring it back to tarot. The ten of pentacles card may find its way onto your altar as well. Um, so you can put tarot cards on your altar as well to, to change things up, to, um, to help ground that is in a way significant and corresponds to the autumn equinox. Um, non-ritual ways to celebrate, make some apple cider. Um, you could always put apples on your altar. Um, if memory serves, I believe we're going to be going apple picking for the autumn equinox um, with my coven. So um, collect beautiful leaves and arrange them in a vintage frame, or you can collect leaves and then put it onto your altar. Thank the trees and flowers for their gifts. Um, make a list of everything you're grateful for and thank the universe for it. Um, so oftentimes I will, I will have an apple on my altar for the autumn equinox. However, um, if you're allergic to apples or don't like apples for any reason, you can use pomegranates or citric citrus fruits. Um, you can use um, white candles um, if you're strapped for candles um, or, or don't have many of the different colors, candles. Um, you can always use white or black in substitution. You may want to have um, a specific incense that you want to put on your altar um, that is an earthy incense. I usually like to light sandalwood or frankincense at this time of year. Um, but anything that feels like earthy or spicy scented, um, I mean, obviously, pumpkin spice lattes. I'm not going to fault you for your PSLs at this time of year. <laughs> um, but so that would be a way how to decorate your altar. And that's an example of how you would decorate your altar for autumn equinox. Um, you don't have to do an altar for um, every Sabbath, but it is a good um, entry point um, if you're unfamiliar with creating altars. Any questions? Oh 
mean, some of these sections in this book is actually are, are actually really awesome, and they're giving me ideas for altars, such as like and I um, like a fashion altar um, where I put clippings um, of outfits that I want to try, or makeup, or even making a makeup altar instead of having a vanity. Make your vanity an altar, an altar to beauty. Have a statuary of Aphrodite or Venus on it or whatever deity um, brings to mind beauty or sensuality. Um, put your makeup on it. Um, have um, glam, I mean, do glamor spells at your vanity altar. Um, I mean, I, I'm kind of inspired because I've got the, I've got like, I've got a lot, I'm rocking a lot of pale pink lately. And I think it's just like, it's way of saying you need to create a, <laughs> you need to create like um, an altar to Venus or an altar to Aphrodite. Um, like I'm literally surrounded by like baby pink <laughs> right now. Um, and I put rose quartz on that altar, put, um, put Himalayan pink sea salt or, um, you know, any number of things can be put on an altar, which is why it's such um, an interesting and big topic because you really, in personalizing your altar, um, you make more connections and you strengthen, um, you really do strengthen your magic. I'm, I'm bookmarking this chapter on fashion magic and fashion as spiritual armor. <laughs> um, again, specificity, what is your intention? What are you looking to do? Um, is very important. You might you might create an altar for divination, and that's where all of your tarot cards, or your runes, or um, or your I Ching, or um, can be put on it, or near it, or around it. Like my altar is a mess right now. Like I had planned on taking a picture of it, but again, like um, I'm a little bit embarrassed about it. Um, but it's also moti motivating me to clean that altar and give it the space and the breadth and attention that it deserves so that it can, you give the respect and then it gives the respect back to you. So, you know, clean up your, clean up your incense, your leftover incense, um, incense dust, basically. Um, change things out, look at what you have on your altar, um, and also assess whether or not it should be, remain on your altar or, um, be magically decharmed or given to another person after magically decharming it, um, or putting it into the earth to be redistributed or you know disposed of disposed of it in a safe and respectful manner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, Katie. Maybe before and after photos. Maybe before and after photos for us later. Um, yeah, I can. I can do that. <laughs> um, life, cre life creeps in creeps um creeps up on you but definitely i can do that and actually um i i am going to be doing that um for the autumn equinox so that i can bring that to you in the next episode and have like kind of like mm, almost a part two of this episode but also like see seeing my um autumn equinox altar in action may help um may help um, actually, I do have some um, images that I took for um, for in bulk a few years ago um, prior to the pandemic that might be helpful. Let me see if I can look them up really quickly. If I can't look them up really quickly, then I'll, I'll have to share them at another time because I do want to keep us to time because I'm looking at the time and I'm seeing we only have seven minutes left. I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to to do it too quickly. 
but even my card of the day can sometimes be um, a, a mini altar in itself where I lay out my card and I put little accoutrements or crystals um, around it. That could be considered a mini altar. Let me see if I can find it based on timing. I have a feeling I'm not going to see it in time, but I definitely did store it. I know I have it. I found a cute picture of my husband and I from New Year's Eve. <laughs> It was freezing, freezing cold. All right, I'm not going to waste more time on it, but. Definitely before and after pictures for definite. Um, OK, before we move into the weekend forecast, does anyone have any questions for me about altars? And I wanted to show you guys the tessera. Let me go and grab that. Be right back. Okay, I am not seeing any questions, which is fine. <laughs> but you can free, feel free to ask questions after the broadcast and I will get to them when I get to them or I will answer them in next week's episode on the autumn equinox. So we are going to get into the weekend forecast and let me make sure that I get the crawler for the weekend forecast. First, I want to say I'm going to pull from the Tessera because I can't wait. <laughs> the, she came out with a new charm and I have to add it into the mix and pull from it and maybe we'll get it and maybe we won't. But look, the new Tessera charm is called the hammer and you might as well call it the anvil because it looks exactly like Bridget's anvil to me, who is my, um, my goddess that I am pledged to, that I am in votary priestess training for to become a priestess of Bridget. So I had to get it and it was kind of a sign from above that that was the next Tessera charm. So this is the first time I am taking her out of her cellophane and putting her into the mix and shaking it up. And we are going to pull from the Tessera for the weekend forecast. Okay. So instead of getting the, um, the hammer, we are getting another one of the newer Tessera charms. We are getting the mosquito charm. So let me pull up that interpretation very, very quickly. But the mosquito can be um, an annoyance that 
turns from a smaller thing into a bigger thing. Um, so again, this is the weekend forecast. So let me see here. The crow, the anchor, the lighthouse, the mosquito. Okay, so the mosquito interpretation is a theft. It feels like only a small thing is being taken, but it is not. It may just be a little drop, a small annoyance, and then you can ignore it, but it is not. Maybe someone is taking too much of your time, or maybe it is someone making unkind comments. It is not nothing. Something is being taken from you. It may seem to be only a little thing, but you can suffer a death by a thousand cuts. Defend yourself even when the attack seems small, and there is a difference between something being given and something being taken. Do the people in your life know the difference? Who or what is stealing your energy and where would that energy be better spent? So that is the in interpretation of the mosquito charm from the Tessera Oracle. Um, so there you go right there. The camera is not doing it justice right now. Um, but yeah, remember that um, the mosquito is um, can be an annoyance, but it also carries disease. It carries disasters. So, you know, maybe instead of minimizing something, you should be considering the many ways small things or small annoyances can have bigger repercussions. So that is your weekend forecast, the mosquito from the Tessera charm or the Tessera oracle. Um, I'm gonna wrap things up really quickly here. Reminder that we do these every Friday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And once again, I am Hillary, professional tarot reader, demystifying the mystical and putting you in touch with the most beautiful gifts, your own intuition. And don't argue with me, you have intuition. Have a wonderful, wonderful night, and I will see you next week, Friday, 6.30 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, where we talk about the autumn equinox. Good night, everybody. Good night, Katie, and you're welcome. Enjoy. Have a wonderful, wonderful week until I see you again. Bye.